Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jay Klein connect here with head coach Scott Langer. Coach, uh, four points on the weekend. Friday night, a 4-3 win. Um, gave up some chances for sure, but uh, you guys ended up obviously doing enough to, to come away with the win on Friday. Uh, as a staff, how did you guys feel about Friday night's game? Really good start. Thorner guys came out uh, ready to go. Uh, we really controlled the pace there in the first period. Uh, obviously, getting off to a, a pretty good lead helped us. Uh, second period, we, you know, we uh, we weren't quite as good as the first period, obviously, and 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 Minot came out um, in the second period, and, and and they had some determination to their game, and yeah. and obviously made it a hockey game. Um, but the result was there. I thought our guys did a did a great job there in the in the third period, and. Uh, worked pretty hard, and, and you know that's a team that that can create chances with their with their skill level and, and their ability to skate. So uh, we did a good job. Yeah, a lot of depth with that Minot team too, and like you said, uh, a strong first uh, on Saturday night too. Getting up early, just uh, three minutes and some change in, end up winning three uh, two in a shootout. But uh, again, they didn't uh, they didn't go away, and uh, you guys. Did, Again, real strong first, but uh, gave up some chances. They kind of crawled their way back into it. And a heck of a good hockey game, actually. I mean, as far as entertainment-wise. Yeah, you know, we uh, we really had a chance to go up 3 nothing in that game with, uh, you know, Bros just going across the goal line and, and Beatty hitting the, the crossbar. Um, you know, they, they had a little puck luck on their side there early in the game, but... Um, it was a good hockey. I mean, we put up 50 shots against that team. Obviously, their goaltending was good. They they did a good job defending. But, uh, you know, again, uh, we give up one late, uh, you know, off, yeah. off a play that we can control. And But our guys responded. They, I mean, we had to kill off a, a power play in, in overtime in, in order to, to get a chance to win that game. And, big. you know, our team stepped up and, and did some big things. So, uh, again, giving ourselves an opportunity to take two more points. And, and obviously, you know, Clay... Um, finishing off there in the shootout, an outstanding performance by Henry Welch. So, you know what? It's uh, there was a lot of good. There was more good to come out of that weekend than there was anything else. Without a doubt, like you mentioned, Cosentino scoring on the shootout, and then Henry Welch, uh, Stonewall, and Cleveland. What uh, you know? Obviously, you've got them coming up Wednesday. What have you got to work on? What What do you got to get better at? Well, it's a short turnaround. You know, it's uh, you, you can't do a whole lot today after coming off that weekend, and then we have to travel game day. So. Uh, you know, it, it's just keeping keeping smart, keeping fresh, and yeah. and stay a little polished. And you know, our guys have confidence, and uh, you know, we we play well in their building. It, it seems like we we have a, a ability to get up in their building, but uh, it's never easy to travel game day and and, and get points. So um, you know, we got to be sharp, and obviously, we need those two points. And might not uh, I think. Uh, with Austin losing last night, fell down to the four spot. So they're going to be motivated, uh, you know, to come after those two points. So uh, we got to be ready to go. This is a huge week. Yes, it really is. And you mentioned it. Uh, Minot does fall to the four spot. Wings still on top of the Central Division with 64 points. Bismarck with 57 and second. Austin with 54 and third. Minot with 53 and fourth. And then the Wilderness with 45 and St. Cloud with, with 25 points. You know, Coach, uh, you talked about it a little bit in the pregame on Saturday about what has to be done to take away chances from a team like Minot that has that depth and, and has that skill. Um, but it is a lot of it's just just hard work, isn't it? It's just giving up your body and making sure that uh, that you're working. Yeah, you know, you look at the difference from Friday to Saturday. Friday, uh, we weren't that interested to get in front of shots. On on Saturday, you know, I think in the in the first four or five shift, we blocked five or six shots. Spencer Schneider did an unbelievable job of of, of getting us going there that game with, with some of those shot blocks. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, you, you have to be willing to defend and it's hard to defend. You don't have to be smart to defend. You just got to work hard. And uh, we, we did that. We, we definitely came back on, on Saturday and did a much better job limiting their chances compared to the chances we gave up, which was, was almost a season high on Friday night. All right. Well, like we talked about Wednesday in Minot, they're going to be honoring a young fan that passed away. Um, it's going to be an emotional night in that building for sure for them. Uh, a lot of depth, like we talked about, and, and a team that can hurt you. Um, what uh, What do you see as some keys uh, um, against this team that you just faced? I mean, obviously, is it more of the same? It's hard work. Yeah. It's, uh, it's having outworked them for, for 60 minutes. and. You know, you take a couple shifts off, they're, they're right back in the game. So, sure. um, you know, we just have to be ready to play. It's an odd week game, and 
Uh, it's going to be a long road trip with, with three and four nights. So, and then our guys heading off to the prospects. So we have to just be sharp. We have to be sharp. We have to do what we, we know how to do. And that's, that's when hockey games. All right. Well, you mentioned it. a lot of hockey coming up. Minnesota Wilderness, uh, they split the weekend. Another team with a lot of depth and skill. Uh, it's, it's been a while since the Wings have seen the Wilderness back since early January. In fact, um, what have you seen from the Wilderness? Have they gotten any better? Are there some keys that uh, I know it's you got a, a Minot game before that, but I'm kind of looking ahead to the weekend. Uh, what do the Wilderness bring? You know, their, their top guys show up every night. Yeah. You, you look at the scoring, they, uh, they lean on some guys heavily and, and they seem to get the job done for that team. They're, they're in every game they play. Uh, we know their skill level and they're, they're probably one of the better skating teams in our division. Um, you know, they've had some change there in net, so we'll see who, how that works out, um, you know, once we do our pre-scout on their goaltenders. But uh, uh, again, you know, it's, uh, it's road hockey. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just yeah. has to be result driven. and. Um, you know, those are points we, we got to try to have. So uh, we just got to play smart hockey and be ready to go. Okay, and finally, I wanted to talk about, and you mentioned it, top prospects. You've got a game Wednesday, then Friday, Saturday. Then you turn around and seven of your guys go to top prospects along with you, of course. It takes a toll on the body. I mean, these guys, um, they're, they're used to, to being able to re uh, rest and recover, and they know their bodies, but it, it takes a lot to, to – play that much in that short period of time doesn't it it is and it's you know it's one of the things i've always talked about here since this this prospect thing became such a big deal is is as a league we really have to look at taking a weekend off and it's it's not about anything else but but the players yeah and the player safety the um playing of that many games the road trips and and the teams that have to go on the road prior to the prospect tournament uh, it is very demanding a junior hockey game in 60 minutes is is especially with your, your top players, it's demanding. Yeah, It's physical, it's demanding. It, there's a lot that goes into preparation for a hockey game for an individual athlete. And uh, it doesn't allow them to do that. Um, you know, we get one day break, but we're sitting on a bus for seven hours from, from Minot to Cloquet. And uh, then we got to play right away. And then those guys come back and they jump on a plane. So, uh, and they're playing first thing Monday. Yeah. Um, it's a, to me, it's a player safety thing. So our, uh, the guys that are playing it, they got to take care of their body, make sure they're hydrated, make sure they're doing the right thing in the short amount of time they, they have to be prepared. So, but it's an awesome opportunity for these guys that are going. You know, they get to showcase their abilities in front of a lot of scouts, and uh, they just have to do what they, they can do to, to be the best they can. And when they get there, they just have to do the best they can with what they got. Control what you can. Like you said, I mean, almost something that probably should be looked at as far as the player safety thing. Because like you said, incredibly demanding, and that's a lot to ask of a, of a body. All right, Coach, well, that's about all I've got for you. Um, great weekend here uh, in the ODI Center against Minot. And best of luck coming up against uh, Minot on Wednesday. And then, of course, against the Wilderness this coming weekend. Thanks, Jay. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break here. And we'll return with a player coming up after this. <laughs> Welcome back as we continue on with Wings Weekly and as promised and as usual, a player joining me in the second portion of the show. And today it's Spencer Schneider of Lakeville, Minnesota. First of all, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. And uh, Coach Langer, you know, just uh, just talking about the weekend that you had mm -hmm. uh, and uh, giving up your body and just uh, the level of hustle and compete. It was uh, great to see you guys come away with some wins there. Um, first of all, let's start Lakeville, Minnesota. Can't be a whole lot different than Aberdeen, South Dakota. I mean, as far as the climate goes and yeah. stuff, where I, you know, we get some guys from California and stuff, and I always got to talk to them about what, what the culture shock. But probably not the case for you, huh? No, definitely more of the same than it is in Minnesota. You know, my roommate Clay, he's from California, and whenever we leave the house, you know, sometimes he'll be bundled up in a coat. <laughs> like it's so cold out, and I'm wearing like something casual. Like, <laughs> I'm so used to it, so been really easy to adjust really for sure well henry welsh also from lakeville did you know henry coming in or before uh, coming to the wings i would imagine so mm -hmm. i've known henry for a long time probably since we were like eight we grew up playing together and then our city there's like from north and lakeville south so mm -hmm. we play against each other big rivalry game so it was always fun to play him so i were you able to get a little pre-scout from him about what to expect from uh, about aberdeen and from the wings yeah when i was first coming here i texted him he was the first guy i texted i said hey like i'm coming i said like what's it like and he told me everything and 
it was good to have him here to know and uh, get an inside look at it. I can imagine, yeah, having uh, somebody already on the ground, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, you enjoying it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Good, glad to hear it. All right, well, you spent a little time in uh, in the British Columbia League too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, it was definitely different, you know, kind of totally different style of hockey. It's more, uh, you know, not a lot of defense. It's more high skill offense, you know. Yeah. So it was definitely an adjustment coming here. Was, they're kind of two different leagues, but in the end, it's all hockey. It's all similar, you know. You have the same objectives and your position, you do the same thing, so. Do you feel like one fits your style better than the other? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'd probably say this one because I, I like to play defense. You know, I pride myself on defense. And so. that's why I asked that question because I, I noticed yeah. that about you that you do, it, it seems like that, you know, you like coach said, you're blocking shots, you're, mm -hmm. you know, getting hits and uh, and it seems like it does kind of fit you. You're um, committed to Bowling Green. Yep. Well, tell me a little about Bowling Green and what uh, what made you decide that that was going to be good for you? Uh, you know, first off, the first thing I think of is my brother goes there right now. Okay. So he's a sophomore right now. And, you know, I took a tour there two years ago in the fall. And, you know, I really liked it. They have a good campus, good facility. You know, the coaching staff is super good. And, you know, I know another kid on there, Garrett Daly and Max Johnson. They're both from Lake Phillip, too. So I know a ton of people there. So as like I said, I was talking to Henry about what it's like. I talked to them and they kind of give me the inside scoop. So I got a really good picture. Not going in blind for sure. Yeah. Well, how did you get started in hockey? You mentioned you have a, an older brother. I would imagine yeah. that had a big part of it. Yeah, it did. He would always kind of like, he would, he started hockey and he kind of pushed me into it to like play hockey with him. So I, I kind of was forced, but it was a good <laughs> thing I was. And we'd play all the time every day. So did, did he play juniors? Yeah, he did. He played, uh, he played for the Brookings Blizzard. Oh, right on. His first year. And then he went to Dubuque the year after. Gotcha. Uh, well, we talked about your brother. How about the rest of your family? Tell us a little about uh, about what home's like. Uh, home's good. You know, my mom, she works really hard. She works uh, for Thomson Reuters okay. company there. Very and cool. then my dad works for U.S. Bank. He does uh, IT work, stuff like that. And it's funny because he's a big Packers fan. <laughs> so when, uh, over Christmas break, we had the Packers-Vikings game. Sure. And we had fun with that. So I can, Im I can imagine. Yeah, that was on, I think, the 23rd. Right? Monday mm -hmm. night? Yeah, it was yeah. a Monday night game. Right on. All right. Well, you know, we talked a little bit already about this weekend. Uh, what do you see, you know, I, I, when you look around the locker room, when you're talking to guys, when you're watching film, whatever, what do you guys have to do to, to, to improve, to get better, to, uh, you know, to make sure that you're not allowing teams or, or starting to become a little uh, dominating, I guess, maybe is the word I'm looking for. Uh, because there's some darn good teams out there. Obviously, Minot is one of them. And we talked to the coach just moments ago about uh, you know giving up some chances because they're going to get chances. Mm -hmm. What do you guys have to do moving forward, not just against Minot, but the rest of the season? What do you see as some, uh, some areas that you, you, you want to get better at? Uh, first things first, I'd say, I mean, from the turnoff from Friday to Saturday, I think Coach Hill sent a message of you have to buy in. Yeah. You have to you know, do what's best for the team, whether that's sacrificing your body, you know, playing hard defense before you get, you know, going up for offense. So I think that's a big part, you know, buy in and play your role. But I mean, I know we've done it. I mean, we went on that big streak, so we're obviously capable of doing it. I think we just kind of hit a rough patch last week, but it's starting to turn around, which is a good sign. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this, if, uh, if a rough patch is two games, that's, that's yeah. pretty good. It's not much of a rough patch. So uh, let's see. You got to, we got Wilderness coming up too. Have you got a, cause you joined the team a little later. Mm -hmm. when, when did you get here about, was it early December? Yeah, early December was my first week here. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Have you, you so you, you've only seen the Wilderness what one time then I think in, uh, in early January it was. Um, what do you, what do you know about, uh, about the Wilderness? Uh, like coach was saying, they're a fast paced team. Yeah. Definitely in our league. Uh, they rely on their skill more than they do uh, hard work I'd say, but. You know, it's always a good game. I mean, they are in every game they can play. Their top players are good too, so. For sure. Well, and, and we kind of already touched on this with Henry being here already, but uh, is it, well, I always think it's interesting when a player comes later in the season because the guys have already had a chance to kind of have, have a little camaraderie, you mm -hmm. know, and they've kind of got some chemistry and kind of uh, melded, I guess. That's got to be a little more difficult coming in, you know, when everybody's already been in the locker room for a while. Even with, I mean, like I said, it's got to help with Henry being here and having some, someone you know. But still, that's kind of a, a, a little bit of a more difficult journey, I would imagine. Yeah, it was definitely a change. But, I mean, the guys are all super nice, super good guys. So they welcomed me in right away. And 
within the first few days, I was already comfortable just being in here. So yeah. they did a really good job on that. Excellent. All right. Well, Spencer, I, that's about really all I've got for you. Um, I usually ask some silly questions about uh, your superstitions and stuff like that. <laughs> so do you have any, any, um, any weird or what might be considered weird pregame kind of rituals or anything? Uh, not too much. I used to do it, but sometimes like for whatever reason you can't do it. And I didn't want to like throw off my game. Yeah. But I mean, I have the same pregame meal. I have an almond butter and jelly sandwich. An Before almond week. butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, I'm allergic to peanuts, so <laughs> I had to go with the alternative. But that's what I have before every game. Uh, other than that, you know, first thing I do when I get here is just take my stick. Like, I always listen to music. I like Drake a lot, so right on. I'll listen to him. All right. One of my, one has become one of my favorite questions. What's the sickest chirp you've ever heard or someone's ever said? Ooh. I don't know if I can use, I don't think <laughs> I can say that one, but. <laughs> like, it's got to be clean. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if I don't really trash talk, but people give it to me. I mean, I don't know if I have to, but I just like, the, like they just chirp you about personal stuff. Like, it's usually kids I know, like stuff from my hometown, uh, something like that. that I always laugh sense. at. I was laughing. If, it's, uh, if, you, if, if somebody gets in your head enough to where you're, you know, later on, still thinking about it. And yeah. Both in the case with Davida and Murph, both of them were like, "Man, I just can't believe he got to me with that." So <laughs> I thought it was a kind of a, a, a funny and interesting question. But um, all right, moving along, folks. Again, Wednesday, February twelfth, a makeup game from earlier in the season when uh, we were unable to make our way north due to inclement weather. That is on Wednesday. It can be heard, of course, on ninety four one The Rock and HubCityRadio.com, as well as the Rock app and on Hockey TV. Then Friday and Saturday, February 14th and 15th against the Minnesota Wilderness, 705 puck drop for all three games. And again, you can watch them at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Aberdeen or by logging on to HockeyTV.com. And of course, as I mentioned, 941 The Rock, HubCityRadio.com or The Rock app. The next home series will be February 21st and 22nd versus the Austin Bruins. And February 22nd is the annual Yield Does Shrine Teddy Bear Toss. Always a very popular game. Um, so bring a new stuffed animal in a bag to throw onto the ice after the wing's first goal. Animals, all the stuffed animals will be donated to the Shrine Children's Clinic in the Twin Cities. Uh, again, make sure it's in a bag so when you throw it over the glass, it uh, doesn't get all wet and on the ice and stuff. So, And uh, for the latest news and information on the wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, or on Instagram. Once again, Spencer Schneider, can't, thanks so much for coming on the show. Great weekend and best of luck coming up uh, here Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Thank you. All right, folks, that will pretty much wrap up this week's Wings Weekly.